In this video, we're going to continue on from the last Recycler View video that I posted, where we built a Recycler View adapter that could display circular images and also text in a Recycler View list right here. So now what we're going to do is attach an on-click listener to each item in the list, and when I click it, it will open to a new activity where it displays a larger image and also will display the name down in the bottom down there. So I can click back and choose another random image. I think this one looks really nice, really great looking high resolution image. And back just to demonstrate one more time. There we go. We're going to be passing the data through intent extras and then using that to retrieve them in the new activity. If you didn't watch the video that preceded this one where we actually set up the recycler view, go to my YouTube channel and search for my recycler view playlist, or here's a link up in the top corner of the screen. Okay, so to get started, I'm going to start by building the new layout that we need. So this is going to be the new layout for the new activity that's going to display the image. Just to kind of give you a visual, this is the layout that we're going to build right here. So let's right click on layout, go to new layout resource file, and I'm just going to name this one activity gallery. And then I'm going to change this to a relative layout, or no, we'll actually go, we'll go linear layout. Um, but we'll talk about that in, in a minute while I'm choosing to use a linear layout and then just click OK. And go over to the text tab. We can close this to give some more room here. And I chose a linear layout because the way I'm going to stack the widgets is I'm going to stack them vertically and use a weight sum to choose how much of the image I want to display. If that sounded confusing, just watch and I'll explain. So to our linear layout, we're going to add something called a weight sum and I'm gonna give it a weight sum of 100. So that means there's 100 units that occupy the entire vertical, or yeah, the entire vertical height of our layout. And now inside our linear layout, we're gonna create the widgets. So the first one is an image view widget, and the, the width is gonna be match parent, and then the height, we're gonna put zero DP. We're gonna put zero DP because we're gonna use the weight sum to determine how much of the height we wanna add. So I'm just gonna start typing weight, and you can see layout weight comes up, and I'm gonna type 70 so that this, this widget is gonna occupy 70 out of 100 of the entire screen's height. So now hopefully it's obvious why I chose to use the weight sum of 100, because you can think of it as having 100%. It's 100% of the layout height, and then I can just go into my widgets and use um, 70, for example, would be like saying I want it to occupy 70%, of the total layout height. Now we can give an ID to our image view. I'm just gonna call it image. And what do we need? We need to add a scale type and I'm just gonna go center crop. And let's type SRC just to put a dummy image in here so we can get kind of an idea of what we want this to look like as we're building it. So the next widget is gonna be the one that displays the name of the, the, the location. So I'm just gonna go wrap content, wrap content for this text view. And you can see that it's already below the um, widget because I have a vertical linear layout. So by default, this is gonna get put down below the widget that was above it. So I don't even have to worry about orienting it or anything like that. Now I'm gonna give it an ID of image description. And we're gonna give it a margin on the left, of maybe just 10 DP. And a margin on the top of maybe 20 DP. And let's get some text in there. So this is gonna be kind of just like some dummy text just so we can get a feel of what the layout's gonna look like. So you can see down here, I can see that little dummy text down there. It's kind of small, so we can increase the size. I'm gonna go 20 SP. I'm gonna change the text color to black. So that's it. That's generally what we're gonna want our layout to look like for this screen right here. Just have our text view displaying the place location name, and then an image view widget containing the image itself. So let's go and create our new class now, our class that's our activity that's gonna display the image. So create a new Java class, and I'm gonna call it uh, Gallery Activity. Notice the naming convention I used here. I called this Gallery Activity, and the layout file I, I called Activity Gallery. You can also notice the same kind of trend with main activity, it's called main activity, and the layout that associ it's associated with acti or main activity is named Activity Main. Okay, so extend app compat activity. And first thing I'll do is get our log for debugging. So you can just type log T. You can see that comes up there. That's just for labeling your debugging logs. Um, oh, if you didn't see what I did there, I pressed control and O. And now we're gonna get on create. 
So I'm just filtering on on create. Then we need to set the content view to our new layout. So set content view r.layout.activitygallery. That's it. Maybe we can do a log for debugging. If you didn't see what I did there, I just typed log D and this is going to get printed to the log so we can tell if our activity was started successfully when we're debugging. And since we've created a new activity, you can see Android Studio here telling us that we didn't register our new activity in the manifest. That's why this is kind of highlighted right here. So you could either click this light bulb. Oh, I think you can click the light bulb. Yeah, and go add activity to manifest. Or you can just go into the manifest yourself, add an activity tag, add gallery activity, and close that. That's all you need to do. If you don't add every activity to the manifest in your application, your application will crash when it tries to open up that activity. So just kind of a be careful about that. If your app starts crashing for no reason, can't figure it out, make sure that you've added them all to your manifest. Okay, so let's close this. And we're gonna create a couple methods here. So private void, uh, what are we gonna call it? We can call it get. Actually, before, you know what, before we even do this, let's um, start the, let's go into our recycler view adapter because we need a, we're gonna need a way to um, actually initiate the change in activity. So when I click on this, we need to have some code that's, that recognizes the click and then knows to send me to that new activity. So we're gonna do that by going into our recycler view adapter here. And I've already actually made an on-click listener uh, from the previous video right here. You can see holder parent layout set on-click listener. And inside here, we're just gonna add a couple lines of code. So as I said in the in introduction to this video, we're gonna use an intent. So intent, intent equals new intent. And we just need the context. And then we wanna reference where we're going to. So we go gallery activity class because that's a class that we're navigating to. And then we need to attach some extras to the intent because we're going to need gallery activity to know which item we clicked on. And we do that by attaching some extras. So we can go put extra and then give the extra a name. Oops. Give the extra a name. I'm going to call the first one image URL. This is going to be put extra. So image URL. And then do comma and then attach the object that you want to attach to that extra. So we need to go M images and then get position, and that will attach our image URL to that intent extra. So now we wanna do the same thing with the name. So go image name, and we can just go M image names, get position, and that's it. Now we have in, uh, extras attached to our intent, and now we just need to start the activity and send it over. So because we're inside of a recycler view adapter, we have to go context, then start activity, and then we just pass the intent. Notice that if I was to just put start activity, it doesn't accept that because I'm in an adapter class. It doesn't know the context of where you're trying to start the activity from. That's why we need to reference the context. But if I was just in main activity, for example, and I can just start typing this anywhere, and I wanted to start an activity, start activity, uh, you can see that it lets me, and that's fine. But inside of an adapter class, it doesn't know what the context is, so you need to reference the context before you call start activity. Okay, so that should open up gallery activity, but now in here we need to retrieve our intent extras and then set them to the widgets. So the first method is the one I was I started to build when I first came into this class. We'll go private void get incoming intent. And I can just write a log saying checking for incoming intents and we can do if, so it's always, it's very important that you check to make sure the intents uh, have any extras before you actually try to get the extras. Uh, otherwise your app will crash if you try to get the extras. So that might have sounded a little confusing, so I'll just type that out and I'll explain it as I go. So the first thing I'm gonna do is check to make sure they have extras. So I'm gonna type has extra and then go image URL and we also want to check for the other one. So get intent dot has extra image name. So this, this call will not cause the app to crash if the intent extra isn't attached. But if I was, well, I guess I can type a log first here. So found intent extras. But if I was to do this image URL equals get intent 
uh, get string extra image URL, this will cause the app to crash if, if the intent extra doesn't exist. That's why it's always a good idea to do this first because then you're kind of protecting yourself. You're, it's going to check to see if they, the extras exist and then if they do, then you can get the extra. If I was to call this line, say, above here and the intent extra wasn't attached, the app would crash. So always a good idea to do this. Okay, so the next one is the image name, get intent, get string extra, image name. So there we go, that will get our image URL and our image name. Now we need to use those and set them to the widgets. So I'm gonna create one more method. So private void, we can just do, I guess, set, uh, yeah, I guess set image, why not? And so log, setting the image and name to widgets. Did I spell all that right? Yep. And we're going to pass them to here. So image URL, string image name. So to set the text view, it's actually really simple. Uh, so we first need to actually get our text view widget though. So let's go name equals find view, find view by ID, art ID dot uh, image description. And then we just do name set set text and set it to the image name. And that's it. That'll set the image name. The image itself is a little bit more difficult because we have to use glide. If you don't know what glide is, I go over it in pretty, I'd say pretty good detail in the previous video uh, that preceded this one. So definitely check that out if you're confused. So I'm going to kind of go through this quickly. Uh, so load, and then we want to pass the image URL. And then we want to do into our image view widget. So I actually need to create the image view widget first. So image view, image view equals find, whoops, equals find view by ID. Just do image name and image description. Those IDs are wrong. Let me just double check here. So that's just image. Uh, for some reason it's not auto completing that, but there that should be fine. And then we're just going to pass image into here and that's it. So this is going to set the text view. This is going to set the image to the image view. Now we just need to call our methods. So we can go get incoming intent right here. And then inside of get incoming intent, we're going to go set image and pass the image URL and then pass the image name. And that is it. It's time to test. So um, I'm going to open up the log actually so we can see since I got some, I got a lot of logs here and I'm filtering it on my app. If you don't know how to filter on your specific app, you can just copy the package go to edit filter configuration, just type a name, any name is fine, and then post your package into here and click OK. And that's going to filter it so that the log will show nothing except for the one that the app that you're running right now, the one that you're debugging for. So let's see what happens. Okay, so there we go, we have our app opening. Let's click on just kind of a random image here. And we can see it opens up to the new activity. Uh, let's just try another one. That works too, great and one more just because cool so everything's working as we expect if you found this video helpful make sure to uh, this is the recycler view tutorial that I posted yesterday make sure to go down to the comments and thank this guy right here Samir Dev because he asked uh, me to make a part two where we uh, clicked on an item in the recycler view and then went to the next page to show the details uh, and the text and then another image view so make sure to thank him give him a thumbs up if this video helped you um, I do listen to, I do, I read every single comment and sometimes I don't reply because I don't have time, but I do read every single comment I get. So I, if, if it doesn't seem like I saw your, your um, suggestion, I definitely did. And I just wait to see kind of if more people want it, how long it's going to take me to make. So definitely leave comments if you want anything in particular. I'm not promising that I'm going to do it, but if you never ask, you're probably never going to get it. And on another side note, um, another good idea is to follow the Coding with Mitch Facebook page. I read the messages on there daily pretty much. Um, post, posting there is a good idea. Commenting on there is another good idea. If you really want to get yourself heard, if you have an idea and you want something to be done, definitely the best places to do it are on the Facebook page, in the comments, or even follow me on Instagram. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.